All right, YouTube Linux gamers, what is up? Today, uh, we're going to go through a, or tonight, <laughs> we're going to go through a uh, fix on how to uh, get um, multiplayer working in Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. If you don't have this fix applied, generally what will end up happening is uh, you'll join a multiplayer match, and within three to five minutes, the match will stop, and everybody in the match will get booted back into the lobby uh, because of a sync or desync issue. Um, this is kind of a bummer. Uh, so you don't want to be the guy that gets everyone uh, kicked back to the uh, lobby. Um, I'll show you how to kind of attack this like a Linux pro if you're new. Um, I'm going to be doing a series of these little proton fixes to try to help people out a little bit. Um, for the most part, the uh, resources that you're going to need are going to be on uh, ProtonDB. But I know some people are more visual, and if they're looking at this for the first time, they might feel a little overwhelmed. So I kind of want to break it down and show you what's happening. Um, there are a few different versions of this fix uh, available. Uh, I've tried a few of them, and I haven't run into one that doesn't work yet. But there's one down here that I think is a little bit more um, efficient because we're making use of a file that is already in the directories associated with the game rather than going on Microsoft's website and downloading, um, you know, downloading a file and then unpacking it. So I'll have this basically kind of laid out in the description of the video itself. But um, what we're essentially doing here is we're using a package called cab extract to extract a visual C++ redistributable. Um, and when that happens, it's going to unpack a bunch of files into the Steam prefix that, uh, or the, excuse me, the Wine prefix that the Steam game lives in. And a Wine prefix is basically a file and folder structure that mimics, uh, sort of in a way, what is on Windows. It sort of tricks applications and games into thinking that they're running on Windows, when in fact they're actually running in Wine on Linux. So... This is a pretty good uh, fix here. Um, I've used this before with some luck. I've definitely played quite a bit of multiplayer uh, after doing it. Um, when the game updates, you may have to reapply this fix again, so keep that in mind. Um, so for the most part, when you are when you have these uh, kind of terminal commands laid out, it's, it's generally gonna be more accurate and, and faster for you to just sort of copy um, what's here. Uh, this is fine if you kind of know uh, what you're what you're copying in and what it's doing. So I think uh, I think that as you get more comfortable, you're, you're going to want to get kind of used to seeing commands laid out like this and um, executing them in your terminal. But for those of you who are maybe a little bit more visually oriented or are new to this sort of concept of getting games running in Proton, I'll sort of go through um, one step at a time and show you what you're going to need to do. If you don't have this cab instruct uh, package installed, when you try to run uh, this command down here, it'll just say, hey, I don't have that. Um, you may need to install that on your distribution. Uh, for Fedora, I did not need to install that. I already had it. Um, if you do need to install it, it's no big deal. It's just a terminal command. Uh, it's a really small package, too. It takes like a, a fraction of a second to install it. Um, all right, so let's get into it. Basically, uh, this first line is uh, install a cab extract if you don't have it. The second line is copying this uh, Visual C++ redistributable uh, from the uh, common game files folder uh, in the uh, Steam directories into the uh, Steam prefix um, under C Windows System 32. Okay, so it's placing that file there with the same name. Um, this one is, if you were in Terminal, this would actually uh, move you into the correct directory that you needed to be in to um, run these commands. So I definitely suggest uh, you know, using this method if you can. Um, these last few, uh, this is going to extract the cabinet file. This is going to extract a child of the cabinet file. And this one is going to recursively change the ownership of a uh, the files and, and folders in uh, this uh, prefix system32 uh, folder uh, to you. So it's going to change the ownership of the uh, subfolders to you. So that's an explanation of what this is doing. 
uh, let's approach this from a visual perspective uh, to kind of get a bearing on where these things are. Um, if you are, if you have Nautilus or your Dolphin or whatever your default file explorer is, if you're in your home directory, Steam files are going to be in a hidden directory. You can show hidden files here. If you're ever in terminal and you want to uh, take a listing, you can always do, you know, if you just give it a regular LS, it's going to show you, you know, standard files, but not the hidden ones. If you do LS-A, it's going to show you everything, including the hidden files. So that's another way of looking at it. Um, we're going to, let's go ahead and navigate to where these, uh, this file is in, in the uh, folder structure here. So we're going to want to go to uh, .steam, steam, and I think it's going to be uh, steam, steam apps, right, right? I get a little turned around sometimes when I'm looking at <laughs> folder structures. I'm used to doing things in terminal. Uh, steam apps common, AOE2DE, and the file uh, that we're going to copy here or what this terminal command would be doing, it's gonna be doing basically what I'm doing with the GUI here. It would be copying this, okay? And now what we would do or what this command would essentially do is it would go back a few directories to the Steam apps directory and it would go into compat data here. So what this particular number is, uh, this is a Steam app ID. Um, when you first uh, run a game in uh, Steam Play Proton, it's gonna create this uh, folder for you. If you haven't run the game yet, you might not have this folder, so make sure to do that. If you're ever uh, in this uh, collection of folders here and you don't know what the hell, what folder <laughs> you need to go into to get to the game uh, that you're tweaking, uh, you know, Google, you use some Google foo. Uh, we're looking for 813780. Uh, 8 okay, so it looks like we're in the right place. Let's go ahead and click into there. Uh, this is the uh, wine prefix that has uh, Age of Empires sort of nestled in it. So we're going to go to uh, PFX prefix, drive C. This looks familiar, doesn't it? Windows, system 32. Okay, so if we had run these commands, what would be happening here is this file would already be pasted in here. Let's go ahead and paste it in here for us. See, it's right there. Now what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to open a terminal in uh, this directory. If I had run those commands, I wouldn't really need to do this. But you can see the terminal is now open with the uh, system32 uh, directory displayed. It's right there. Um, <clears throat> what you're going to do is you're going to run these commands. So we are going to basically run cab extract against the v uh, visual C++ redistributable file um, with administrator privileges. Go ahead and just paste that bad boy in. It's going to ask you for your uh, password. Just provide that. All done. No errors. All right. Looking good. Go ahead and copy the next line in. All right. That seemed to have worked. And let's do the last one. You're going to want to grab that dot at the end of it. That dot is basically specifying this folder. We're going to change permissions recursively on the items in this folder here. Um, <laughs> make sure when you do this, or really when you do anything recursively, that you are in the right folder. If you want to check that you're in the right folder, type in pwd, print working directory. It's going to long form that out. That can also be a really easy way to get a path of something if you need it. Um, so I'm sure I'm in the right directory. Let's go ahead and do this. Bada bing, bada boom. In that case, it didn't provide a message back. When you see that in terminal, you should assume that the command uh, executed successfully. If it doesn't provide feedback, if it doesn't uh, give you an error, um, generally it's safe to assume that the command executed successfully. So yeah, that's that's all. Um, I hope this wasn't. Uh, hope I didn't ramble too much. Uh, get used to using the terminal. It is faster. 
but I think sort of having a, a visual guide on how to do this is helpful for some people. So yeah, that's just another approach to doing uh, this kind of stuff in Linux. All right, you guys have a good one. Uh, I've used this fix before, it does work. So uh, yeah, happy uh, multiplayer Linux gaming. You guys have a good one. All right, later.